everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned into the NFL on EA Sports. This is a team that may be out of the playoff chase at this point, but they're an organization with a ton of pride. And they'll be playing hard all the way to the final whistle of the final game, no matter where they are in the standings. It's the Cougars going up against the Pioneers. With that, let's hand things over to Brandon Gotten and Charles Davis. They've got the call of this Week 14 matchup. All right, we appreciate it, Larry. It's our exclusive coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. Today, we're set for a good AFC matchup between the Chicago Cougars and the Salt Lake City Pioneers. Hello again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, you look at this Salt Lake City ball club. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. On the other side of the field for our visitors here, they have certainly got it rolling of late. Winners of six in a row. And it's simple. The more you win in the regular season, the more likely you play at home in the postseason, and that can take you deep into January. Three quarters of the NFL season are complete. What lurks in our final month? We're underway in week 14. This is taken at the three. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And led out by their veteran quarterback. He's been around a while. They don't celebrate birthdays for him. They just cut him up, see how many rings he's got around the middle. He has been in the league a long time. And he'll give it here to his running back. And tough going there as he'll only get it up to about the 31. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. And when this offense is clicking on all cylinders, the running back is in sync as well. The focal point runs, catches, blocks, sets a tone for the offense. Let's see what the offense comes with here, second and eight. shotgun he'll look to throw and it's a short one here complete to his tight end the reception good for seven it's third down and that's the kind of pass that adds up over time Brandon you may not have picked up a first down there but if you keep chipping away at it eventually big plays may result an early test two plays in this is third and two Now they'll run it on the toss. And he's got the first down as he's up to the 45-yard line. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. Well, partner, they might want to tear up your scouting reports a little bit here because they just broke tendency. Third down, you don't ordinarily see a toss. <laughs> they ran it, and they ran it really well and picked up a first down. I love the way the edges were sealed, which allowed him to get to the corner. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Go on, go on. Go on, go on. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And he's going to go down. They sack him back at the 42. They'll wind up losing three there on the sack. Good pressure, and it's second down. And a play like that with how far he had to go to make that sack shows how athletic defensive ends have become in the NFL. And not just athletic, this is coached in a big way. Run to the football at all times. How about him never giving up on it and pursuing all the way across the field? Second down, offense behind the sticks here. Second and 13. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. He got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. 
In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they can do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. And they'll go on the ground. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. And the big meet on the D-line. We'll see how they do today. And I'd hate to be an offensive lineman having to deal with these guys. They come in hungry, mean, and confident. They think that no one can block them. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to get this inside the 30. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. For so many years, I was convinced it was a myth, you know, because you always hear about the smaller running back. Like, it's lost. You can't find him. And sometimes that's part of his genius. But it's true. You get behind big offensive linemen. The defensive line guy's trying to find him, trying to peek around people to see him, and he gets lost, but this guy gets lost in a good way for his offense, picking up big yardage. that time and it delivers to the tune of a nine yard loss and no matter what the situation the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there right man that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play when you decide to throw the football you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet you talk about guys if they weren't playing football they'd be starring in the NBA at power forward it's really a difficult task And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And leading them, Charles, their quarterback, their field general. Give it to him right up the gun. And he'll get about three as he's taken down at the 23. And the quarterback, he's got some big threats at wideout. And they seem to get bigger all the time, don't they, Brandon? Every time I look out and watch a game, we're getting these bigger, more athletic, acrobatic receivers. We have some today. Second down following the run. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. That's going to be a six-yard gain. It leaves him with third down and just a yard to go. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But the strong safety position ended up making the tackle. And oftentimes, we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. Smart approach there, using the run to pick up the first. And that was a defensive setup they prepared for this week, knowing that keeping it on the ground was the best way to attack it. And that means also that they're able to read them pretty well. All the things they prepared for when they get to the line of scrimmage, they see it in pre-snap recognition and know exactly how to attack based on their planning and preparation. Now a play fake here on first down. He's got time. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. The sack recorded. It's a loss of five, and now it's second down. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. Oh, 
So the defense has put them in a tough spot. It's second and long. Play action. They'll throw. His throw incomplete. Pass interference. Defense. Pass interference call. Charles, you were a defender. You know how hard it is to defend the pass without committing this penalty. And if they would let them play with a little bit more contact and give the defender a better chance, we wouldn't have nearly as many flags. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Partner, your thoughts on this D-line? I love a unit that can control the run and get after the passer. This is an all-around terrific defensive front. Hard to move the ball against them on the ground, and then when you want to throw it, look out. Here they come after the quarterback. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away. And now it's third. And the offense looks to pick up the first here on third after that incompletion. They'll set up a throw. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. That one good for 15 and a first. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield, a really nice pickup. And they'll run it here. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Now that's the type of play that'll fire up a defense, hold them to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all, but they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. Green 39! Green 39! Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Play number nine on the drive coming up, and they need nine yards on third down. They'll drop the throw. This will be caught at about the three. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. Their dangerous wide receiver, his fourth touchdown on the year. And his guys have taken a first quarter lead. And on that one, able to catch it, also able to have the wherewithal to take it in for the score. And how about the phases of a successful catch and a completion of a play? Look the ball in, secure the catch, and then, of course, the run after the catch that ends up in the end zone. A 10-play drive that time, and it culminates in a touchdown for Chicago. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Out comes the defense now here back onto the field. They're just hoping for more of the same. Last time they forced the punt, that led to a score. They flipped the field, essentially, and that's what you want to do as a defense. Make sure that you put your offense in a great position to run their offense and put the ball in the end zone. That's exactly what they accomplished. And they accomplished that last time. What will they accomplish this go around? Now they'll run it on the toss. Takes it to the 26, just a one-yard gain. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, we guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they will just roam and hit. That is incomplete.
And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. The corner blitz pays off there as they sack him for a loss of five. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. And they'll send out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And he fields it cleanly. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right? To be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. They'll run the option left, and he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. Face mask. Defense. Charles, I know it's hard when live bullets are flying, but you cannot keep your hand up around the face mask area. It is absolutely inexcusable nowadays. We talk about target areas all the time. You have to aim lower so that your hand doesn't get involved in the face mask. They'll run it now out of the gun. And very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. one goes nowhere losing yardage on the play back at the 46 so he loses three yards there now third down the insistence of speed at every position is really seen at the defensive end spot these guys in the old days were often outside linebackers they just pushed them forward because they wanted to play fast and get to the quarterback or the running back quicker than ever before now back to throw he's going to air one out Incomplete. He had his hands on it, but couldn't pick it. But it's now fourth down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. Secondary did their job. They hold up. Pass in completion. Here comes the punt. And the kicks away as he angles this one for the sideline. That'll be out of bounds, and how good was that? They'll say the three-yard line. That's where they spot it. And now back out comes the offense. And still no points on the scoreboard. You're coming off of the three and out. They're just looking for anything to grab onto right now, aren't they? I'm wondering if someone's going to take charge in the huddle. You know, we always look at look to the quarterback, but sometimes there's another player on the team, a star, a veteran, someone with some excitement and energy. It's like, all right, guys, let's shake things up and let's go because they still have a Taking it right down Broadway. He's at the 40. Pass the 20. And all the way in for the touchdown. A big play there. Six yards. And his guys are an extra point away from tying this thing up. And I think it's safe to say we won't call many touchdown passes longer than that this year, partner. No, I would agree with that totally. And right now, you're looking at an offensive coordinator 
conservative would not go next to his name. <laughs> Risk taker? Definitely, because he valued the opportunity to create a big play against what could have been disaster if they end up getting sacked or fumbling the ball in the shadow of their own goal line. Extra point attempt to come here. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Surveying the field. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. So one quarter in the books on a cold December afternoon. Seven all is the score. EA Sports NFL Sunday returns following this. With Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, it's our visiting side with a football to begin quarter number two. They face a second and seven to start things out. to throw here looking left side he's got it complete that catch good for only a yard and it'll be third down can you do any more work or make it more dramatic for not much gain than what we just saw there did you see how his toes got down tip tap tip tap got him down but what did he get out of it? He sold the sizzle. He just had no stake. <laughs> I mean, was it one yard? Yeah, you, plays like that, you at least expect a first down there, just one yard. Defense sinking pass. They've got the nickel set out on third and six. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. The good signal callers would never go back in the huddle and play the blame game because they need those guys to protect him. But on that last one, his offensive line, they lost their leverage very quickly, and that's why they were able to get to him and hit him as he tried to throw the football and force an incompletion. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. He'll look to set up his blockers. Now, after the punt on that play, we've got a man down on the field. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. toss and he showed some fancy footwork on the juke but then quickly taken down give him three on first down it'll set up a second and seven not a big run on the first play of the drive but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play sometimes you're just trying to settle in get your guys a little bit of contact and get things moving a handoff as they run the counter play. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. And to give this time to the tailback. And he's across the 40, three extra yards to the 43. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. That was a good, strong run there. While it won't pick up a first down, it was definitely something needed by that offense. A positive run. They got a good push by their guys up front. Maybe something they can build on as this game continues. 
And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. Officially, it's no gain on the play, and they'll remain a few inches shy of a first with third down looming. And when you don't pick up the necessary yardage in that situation, sometimes it starts putting a little doubt in the play caller's mind about what he's going to run on the next play. Because most of them, they thought they were going to pick it up right then and there. Now they've got to adjust what they're doing, adjust what they're thinking, and maybe they go away from what they originally thought. I always appreciate runners who understand situations. That was just third and inches. No reason to dance around in the backfield and try and break off a bigger play. Just go pick up the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Back to throw now on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out incomplete. That was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch. He was thinking about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off. Let's go! Green, 39! Green! And second and 10, he'll look to throw again. And he comes back with one complete. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. And on the ground they go with a running back. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Set up to throw. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And touchdown! Their big-bodied receiver with his second touchdown of the game, number seven on the year. And his guys have taken the lead. Now he's having a nice little first half here, partner. And it's a first half that leaves us anticipating what can still come. I mean, two touchdowns already here through the second quarter. There could be plenty more before this game is over. Now they'll line up to kick the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. That time, a nine-play drive. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be fielded at the 6. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They'll run it now out of the gun. He takes this for three to the 29. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. Gun. He takes this from the 30 to the 34. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Two yards to go here on third down. Green, 39! Green, 39! And the play clock's running down. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. I don't know about you, but that almost Detroit, felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. Just two yards to go here on second down for the offense. That was a good run, probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. 
So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. So here we go, first and 10 now. But we always talk about good down and distance allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. And they'll go with the ground attack here. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. The defense won that play so fast that I think if the running back even had time to notice if anyone was there, it was just a blink of an eye, and there was a loss on the play. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up. Keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. And he's been good. Two first half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence. Does a great deal for your team. Gives them a lead, and they're feeling really good about how they're playing. I think he expects it to at least another one. I was going to say, now he wants the first half hat trick, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead and fling him on the field, folks. He wants that type of celebration. But they certainly got dented with that first down run. So now they've got to be back on their heels a little bit as a defense. All right, here we go. Come on. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And he finds a man with a crossing round. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. Defense comes to the line now, first and ten. They come up at an offset eye. Now a handoff here to his running back. And the lane closes up quickly as he'll get about three down to the 38. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. That was a nice run, a nice game there as they head towards the two-minute warning. And now we're circling here around the two-minute warning. This is a setup play, trying to get one last one in before the clock warning. A reminder that coming up in two minutes, we'll check in with Larry Ridley in Orlando with highlights and analysis of this first half of play. And I'm going to check in with a heater. I'm going to be right there with you, partner. They'll go to the air here on third and two. Wide open receiver complete. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15. And now a first down following that long game. And with that completion, he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half. Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. And, you know, you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays. But with the kind of numbers he's putting up here, it's starting to wear on them a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure out what defense will work and how can they play better without getting beat deep for big passes. This will be caught at about the five. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. And not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? They'll look to throw for it on third and one. That's caught at the one. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. 
It's a three yard pickup and that sets up a first and goal. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. throw again and he just throws this one away smart decision here this close to the end zone and it brings up second down it looked like he might have had a window there but the rhythm was just a little bit off it certainly was because everything that has to come together to get a pass completed yeah you're right the sink just wasn't there and he'll give it here to his running back. And this one will wind up with him losing yardage back to the four-yard line. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. A lot of scrimmage at the four. Here's third and goal. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. That's caught at the two. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one yard line. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And his kick is indeed good. And they will move up by 10 now, 17-7. to 7. And Charles, they get the field goal. Took him a dozen plays, though. Work with me on this one. You know what I'm about to say, right? Bend, but don't break. That's what came into play here for the defense. 12 plays were run at them. They only gave up three points. In a lot of ways, that's a win for the defense. This is taken at his four. And he's going to wind up bringing this one inside the 45-yard line. In just about every special teams meeting, there's a discussion with the punter about his importance. Why? He can flip the field for your team defensively, move it deep into their own territory, or if you're backed up on offense, then he can hit a big punt and change field position and help his defense. In this case, though, field position got flipped by the return team. You can do it so many different ways on special teams. One receiver left, two to the right. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Got a man over the middle, and it's complete. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. It's a five-receiver set. Three to the left, two to the right. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. And he fires one that's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. That late in the clock, second quarter, why not just run it a time or two and get it into the locker room? What you're saying makes absolutely perfect sense. Run it and get out of there. But I'm just wondering if the pressure of today's NFL and the high-powered offenses that you're facing may have forced them into saying, let's try and get some more points. Now this offense ready to head back out there. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Now a handoff as they run left side. They showed off a nice juke of the defender, but the next wave there to bring him down. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. And they'll go on the ground. And he is going to lose yardage here. So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game. As we send you on to Orlando, we hook back up with Larry Ridley. He's got our EA Sports Halftime Report. Thanks, Brandon. I'm Larry Ridley, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. The Pioneers have to like how they've played so far. The Cougars really looked great last week, but it hasn't been so easy for them in this one. 
All right, here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Third down from the 22. Quick pass and completion is made here. And 22 yards later, he's going in for the score. That takes the lead up to seven. Pioneers with the football late in the first. Pass will be completed over the middle. And this play will go for six. We're brand new at seven. the ball midway through the second pass will be completed over the middle and this play will go for six that puts them up by a touchdown now first and ten out of the shotgun pass will be completed and he won't be brought down until he makes it to the 23 yard line there would later be a pick to end the drive Here's Brandon Guy. This is taken at the three. And nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Time for this defense now to get back on the field. They look good in the first half. They'll be looking to carry that momentum over into half number two. Finish a game the way you started it. That's typically the message at halftime when things are going well. You've done everything you're expected to do. How about a little bit more of that in the second half? But be aware they may throw something different at you to begin things. Yeah, 50% of the equation still left to go. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. And he's back here in the struggle department in this one like he was a week ago. And, partner, I think you can pin some of this on that O-line that room to run, just not, not there. You mentioned last week that it felt like the offensive line was getting beaten to the punch by the guys across the ball. Well, it was that, pretty evident, I thought. I mean, they were off the ball fast, penetrating, getting into the offensive backfield really spilling a lot of runs before they got started. So I thought your observation was spot on then, and you're, you're right there again this week. Same thing is happening, not able to get started because they're not able to control the point of attack. So second down was a run play. Now let's see what they do on third. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. He's got his man on the crossing route. 18 yards there and a first down. And there they went crossing route against the zone defense. What do you think of that? Takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football. Because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone. Sometimes you're throwing it between the zone. Sometimes the receiver's going to just kind of find a spot and what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there. It's a tough read, but when they're in sync, it's really effective. Offensive line wasn't set. There's the flag, and five yards back they go. Quarterback has to look around and make sure that his team is ready to go. Sometimes the quarterbacks go faster than is necessary. He went backwards five yards there on third down to bring up four. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he takes it across midfield to the 45. A good comeback there after the penalty. Nine yards at its second and six. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling them in the huddle Detroit, right now. Detroit. They'll run it now out of the gun. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. So the offense has it first and 10. Right, 
They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he'll get three down to the 34-yard line. Switch it up here and look to throw. That is caught at the seven. A really good pickup of 28 yards. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. They'll run it now out of the gun. And that'll get him halfway there as he takes it from the six to the three yard line. throw here and he will score touchdown Chicago it's their quarterback with touchdown number 15 on the year and second of the game and his guys are able to make this a close game again as a former defender I would be angry as well could not get off the field well executed offensive drive no matter what the defense tried they couldn't stop them Point after here, coming up. And this is up and good to make it a 17-14 game. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This fielded at the two. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And he's got it. Got his man on the end round. Complete. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. And a nice pitch and catch to pick up the reception against man coverage. Both of them read how much yardage they needed, figured what they had to do, and were able to beat the man coverage for the completion. Leopard! Leopard! They'll run it now out of the gun. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Let's just go ahead and go back through that play with his eyes because he's got to read his keys. Runner pass right off the top. You're probably going to read an offensive lineman to see if he sets up in pass protection, if he fires out for a running play. The next thing is you're going to check and see what the back's going to do. And if he ends up with the football, okay, now you've got to check and see. Does an offensive lineman come downfield and try and block you? Are you going to try to elude him? Are you going to take him on and hold your spot? What are you going to do? In this case, didn't have to do any of that saw all this key, saw the play in front of him, and ran clean to the ball carrier and finished off the play. Oh, it's a nickel set here defensively on third and inches. Still want to be prepared for a pass. And brought down, but the juke, the very nice juke, gives him the first down yardage there. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. And the offense lining up first and watch ten. Right, watch right, watch right, watch right. Let's go! Ah! From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. They'll come out in the pistol. On play action, they'll throw. Going down the middle, and it's complete. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15. And when an offense is doing a nice job selling the play action pass, a lot of responsibility shifts to the linebackers. They're the ones that have to determine run or pass and get to the proper places on the field.
And here comes play number six on this drive. They go play action here on first down. He's going to get this one out to his fullback. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Give him 6 on the play, and it'll make it second down. And the big guy catches the ball in the backfield, and oftentimes it's quite a surprise to guys playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Come on, boys, come on. Here we go. They'll look to throw again. That's complete right around the eight. And he's able to get it down at a two-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and now they've got it first and goal. Let's go. Blue From the two-yard line now, it's first and goal. And he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. I know the athletes continue to get better on the defensive front, but when you get an odd front, three, four here, the nose doesn't usually make a play like this. Yeah, huge loss. Swallowed him right up. I think what happened there was he usually gets doubled. When you single him up, and if he makes a move on the center, look out. Your running back may get eaten. I have to laugh a little bit because... And he will take it in for the touchdown. Their dangerous wide receiver. His fifth touchdown now on the year. And his guys are going to add on to their lead. So on third and medium, they dial up the pass, and it works to hit the end zone. And it's really not a surprise to me. That's a throwing down in the NFL because of how tough it is to run the football. But what offenses like to do is still show run formations to make them respect it and throw out of those. In this case, they took a nice shot at the end zone and made it pay off. And the lead will grow by one more. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This is taken at his four. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. The defense working their way back out now onto their home turf. See if they can regroup a little bit. They gave up the touchdown last drive. And you know from our meetings with coaches all across the league, one of their pet peeves, when teams get down, a lot of these guys now, they, they want to treat it like it's a video game or something. Hit reset. Let's start over, coach. Out of the first two series, they don't even matter now. Let's, let's play again. That's not how it works. You're down. You gave up a touchdown. You can't do it again. You have to dig in, grit it out, and fight it out. Reset buttons. It's driving everybody crazy. There are no reset buttons when you're playing in this game. Preach, Chucky. Preach. Coaches really don't care from what position they get this. But run after the catch ability, rack ability, is often the difference between winning and losing and changing field position. here on first down. This will be caught at about the three. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. Their dangerous wide receiver hitting double digits with his 10th touchdown of the season. And his guys have made this a one-score game now. Out comes the kicking team here for the extra point. It's up and good, and this now becomes a 24-21 ball game. So just a three-point game now as they send this one away. This is taken at the three. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Out comes this offensive unit as they get set to take over here. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? 
I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Looked like they had an opportunity for a big play across the middle, but he didn't have the concentration or the focus necessary and dropped it before he could haul it in. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. Nine yards to go, it's third down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Just a two-yard pickup, and that should necessitate a call for the punt team here on fourth down. And on now is the punter as he's on here to punt it away. Take it in at the 22. Three quarters in the books. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back live here now in Salt Lake City. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. Two receivers left, one to the right. All right, here we go. Green, 39. Green, 39. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Finding time. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. It'll be a loss of seven on the sack, and it brings up second. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Extra defensive back in there on third and ten. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And now on the pitch, the ball's loose. For the defensive guys, that's wrong on just about every level. You did so many things right. Knock the ball free. You're excited you're going to get the ball. And then the offense gets it back. They will punt it away. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. Now this offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before and realize it hasn't worked go to so well. Else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Watch eight, watch eight. All right, here we go. Green, 39. Green, 39. Now a 
a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. He's got time in the pocket. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. And nobody was open downfield there. Looked like a pretty clear throw away. Yeah, definitely was that. I'm wondering why there wasn't intentional grounding. I know they're saying there's a receiver there in the area. Those down quarterbacks, they get away with everything. <laughs> Spoken like a true defensive back, Mr. Oh, did, did, did that come out? It did. Okay. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. It's a gain of seven, and it'll be fourth down. And the punter stands ready. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. This is taken at the 18. It'll wind up being a net of 41. Nine-yard return, 50 on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. a play fake as they set up to throw and almost intercepted it would have been his second pick of the game instead it'll be second down so incomplete on first let's see what second down has in store to throw and this time he's got the hookup it's complete and they're able to get this one across the 35 and on the outside they're playing press coverage back to throw now on second and ten He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Call it a three-yard gain, and they're going to have a third down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, and tight end. But running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Now back to throw. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had to fly, just sending a guy downfield with the in route accompanying it, what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. Give him 11 yards that time on the return, and that will come the offense as they take over. So out now comes the offense back onto the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. And they'll run it here. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Brandon, that play ended so fast, it's almost as if the quarterback handed it to the runner and the tackler was there right away for a loss of yardage. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. So they get half of what they needed. It'll be third and six upcoming. It's third down, six yards to go for the offense. the shotgun he'll look to throw oh he's got a man wide open complete touchdown a big play there with his second TD of the game his sixth on the year and his guys find a way to stretch that lead 
In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors, but that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. Point after try, forthcoming. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. So they only needed three plays on that drive. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This fielded at the two. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not, He's not a team anymore. I just cut it. All right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, some, hey, listen, there's some guy, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. No matter how you evaluate quarterbacks, at some point, arm strength is going to come into the conversation. I'm really impressed by what I saw on that throw on the out route. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. They'll look to throw. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field, it's popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. Second and ten, he'll look to throw again. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. you got to keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. They'll look to throw now on first down. He's got time. And that's caught. Did he stay in bounds, though? He did not. Ruled incomplete. I don't know about you, but I wanted to reach out of the booth and snatch that pass myself. That thing floated forever up there. I think that threw off the timing of the receiver. That's why he couldn't get his feet down, even though he caught the ball. You know, Charles, I, I would have liked to have seen that. Yeah, me I too. Would, for you. I, I wanted to see you reach out and catch that. Yeah, you've heard about my hands, huh? <laughs> Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. So here we go, a third down after the second down pass completion. Here we go. Back to throw again. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. And a two-score game, obviously. Every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and can serve as much as possible. Play action here on first down. Wide open receiver complete. 22 yards on the pick up there. And it'll be a Chicago first down. Love the call by the offensive coordinator. Recognizing the situation very well. Calling for the play action pass and completing it. And on the ground they go with the running back. And this play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards losing yardage to the 11. It's a loss of two there bringing up second down. 
We just saw another example of how the defense is winning this game. Really at the point of attack, the offensive line is just getting pushed around. I think now as a play caller, you got to give them a little bit of help. Maybe keep your tight ends a little bit more. Maybe the running backs help you a little bit with the pass blocking. But you've got to help them get some confidence because you can't abandon the play calling right now. He lost two there, and it's third down. With the struggles we're seeing up front for the offense today, they've got to think about changing up their play calling. Some screens, some draws, some quick hitting plays in order to try and supplement the run game. You don't totally abandon it, but you try and give it a little bit of help. they got to have six here. It's third and goal. Let's go. to it through the contact. Incomplete. Man, a tough spot to drop that down here third and goal. And so many times when you analyze a play like this, you talk about the people around him and maybe his focus was gone. Sometimes just simply him understanding how close he is to the end zone and a chance to score, and he tightens up and doesn't complete the play. And this one is right through. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So a miss on his first attempt, but this time he gets back on the bike and knocks it home. I know this will surprise you a little bit, Brandon, but you know kickers can be a fragile breed sometimes. You got to wonder what's going through his mind, but he didn't let that first miss impact him one bit. Hey, I kicked back at Harrison High School. Are you calling my ilk soft? This will be taken in at the one. <laughs> There he goes. Touchdown. Their dangerous wide receiver. 99 yards. And his guys are going to add on to their lead. A big time special teams play here in the fourth quarter to extend their lead. And coaches preach it all the time. If you can score on special teams, your chances of winning the game really jump up in a big way. Now, I'll let our analytics friends quantify it and give us the exact numbers, but that's what coaches talk about all the time, that extra momentum, that extra bounce you get from a special team score. I don't have any analytics friends. Those are your <laughs> friends. <laughs> I'll claim them. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So that one goes down as a 99-yard kick return for six from the one-yard line all the way to the house on the other end. So let's try this again. After the kick return TD, here's yet another kickoff. This is taken at his four. Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But let's have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. And they'll get 16 yards there. And that leads to a Chicago first down. A good start there on this fourth quarter drive. They need more of what we just saw. Down a couple of scores. There's still time. All right. It's not like you know, they're totally out of it, but they have to score quickly. And they're going to need some big time plays, chunk plays, explosive plays. They need yardage on each snap. They'll run it now out of the gun. So from the 40 to the 45, five yard run. One of the underappreciated aspects of great quarterbacks is their ability to sell fakes. And on draw plays, when they can sell the pass really hard to the defense and then hand it off, that's when that play's successful. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. I know tight ends love this route because a lot of times they'll fake a block first and get a little bit of space and then come across the middle because in their mind, they're thinking catch the ball and then drop the hammer on the little guys in the secondary. Unable to drop the hammer, he just dropped the pass. An 
extra defensive back in the game now here for third and four. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And he comes back with one complete. And able to pick up the first across midfield to the 47. Fresh set of downs here. Time for a break. We're back to finish this one off after this. So it's our visitors with the football as we get you reset. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. So here we go, first and 10 now. False start's going to push him back, but these days, how hard must it be to be an offensive lineman? It's very hard, Brandon. You've got defensive linemen flinching, trying to draw you offside. You've got the loud crowds, and there are just so many super athletic players on defense now that you have to deal with each week. But through it all, these guys just sit in there for four quarters and slug it out. They'll look to throw here. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. It's a four-yard pickup, and it'll be second and 11. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. They'll look to throw again. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away. And now it's third. And they'll be in search of 11 yards here on third down. Two receivers left, one to the right. Here we go now. Three, nine, three. Three, On third down, he'll drop to throw. Surveying the field. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Going to throw right side here. Complete. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. And now they're in the hurry up. Back to throw now on first down. Sideline throw. It's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. And the numbers, they sort of do the talking. Great game last week. Sharp again here in this one. Sometimes you set habits with how you play, don't you? I mean, you start to put things together, you string them together, and the confidence continues to rise. And guess what? We're seeing that happen in front of us. Back-to-back -back weeks of really good play. And the confidence certainly must be continuing to grow. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. Whether they deserve credit or not, the defense is going to take credit for that incompletion because it always feels good when you slow down an offense. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. Again, he'll drop the throw. Finding time. And he dropped it. Now it was tipped. Altered the ball a little bit, but he dropped it. And now fourth down. Well, we're not playing three yards in the cloud of dust football anymore. I kind of get why those old school coaches sometimes didn't want to throw the football. Because if it's popped up in the air, it almost turns into slow motion. And both sides trying to get to the football. And you're holding your breath wondering whether it's going to go good or bad for your team. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. And Charles, this infraction is going to be against the offense. False start. Sometimes you have to get up to the line of scrimmage. Make sure your team is set before you begin your cadence. He loses five full yards to bring up four. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. He's going to let it fly. And that is incomplete. 
incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and that's going to be just about all she wrote for this one. Well, they had to take one final shot at the end zone, but now things are looking really bleak. And I agree with that totally. You had to take the shot if they did score. You know, whether you call it a miracle or not, you line up, onside kick, get the ball back, throw one more in the end zone, who knows? Had to take the chance, it just was unsuccessful. Now this offense ready to take over again. And that recipe on their last drive that resulted in a touchdown looked pretty good, so they'll be hoping to do that once more. And it takes me back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator and the head coach. They felt pretty good about their game plan and thought there were some holes in the defense and they exploited them the last time out. Let's see if they can come back. Now defensively here, we're going to get a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Second and five. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. And before this play happens, we're going to get a timeout here. That'll leave him with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. They'll run it now, out of the gun. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave them with a fourth down. Now hang on here, timeout called, timeout called by the defense. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. This is taken at the 15. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the offense will come back onto the field for the first and 10. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. They had a great drive going last time. They were moving the ball. And then all of a sudden, it just stalled out. So we'll see what they can do here, Charles. And it's always easy to second guess when you don't get it on a fourth down try. But they had to like the feeling that they had going on offense. They want to continue to see if they can capture that again on this drive and maybe get in the same position. Yeah, and, that's, and like I said, they were moving the football. It's not like they went four and out, so I don't think it's a deal where the offense doesn't have confidence. No, I agree with you totally on that one. If, that, if anything, they may have gained more confidence. Okay, they stopped us once. That's all right. Let's keep moving it. Make them do it again. down at eight now. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. here we go. Green, third. Out of the gun now on third down. And this is intercepted. And that should do it. A great read and it's picked off. And the return here is stopped at the 35-yard line. Obviously disappointing, but you had to go for broke here, down two scores. So that forced you to make some throws you definitely wouldn't want to make. But I think this interception is going to pretty much write an end to this one. Here comes the defense heading back out here on the road. They have a little something to build off of from last time with a three and out. And what they have to build off of? Great confidence right now. Being able to stuff someone on a three and out. You feel like you're in control now. You're doing the dictating. They want to see if that can continue as this game progresses. Will it continue? We'll see. Victory very much in sight now as they'll take a knee. A lot of scoring. There's no doubt about that in this one, Charles. Points, they were not at a premium. They were pretty easy to come by. <laughs> they were, but it was fun, wasn't it? Because both teams finding ways to click. 
And you know people who love this game, they also love baseball games that are 14 to 11 with three or four home runs mixed in. So for the home team here, the win is their fifth of the year as they move to five and eight. And they will hit the road next week. Meanwhile, for our visitors, it's a loss that could have implications on the playoff race as they fall to nine and four. And they'll have a tough one at home next week against the Green Bay Packers. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL.